for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Loveline. 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 With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist, codependent, rescuer, underminer. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. He wears all those hats. The Bravery is in studio tonight. Thank you. John Conway, Michael Zakarin in here, t both from the band. And uh, let's see, a couple things. We'll hear something off uh, their debut CD, which is uh, coincidentally called The Bravery. Uh, they're going to be playing the Inland Invasion, which is coming up. Huge, huge K-Rock event this Saturday. Drew's going to be there. I'm going to go, yeah. Drew calls it the best concert of the year. It is. Well, the Acoustic Christmas is the best concert of the year, but oh, it's, really? it's the best outdoor concert, for sure. Oh, yeah? For sure, yep. And, and Drew, that's a haul for you. Yes, I know, and I don't like concerts. You don't like concerts? You don't, don't like, like people? You don't like kids? Like people, you don't like rock like music? You I don't, don't like, like driving the outdoors? 80 you don't miles like driving? To get. I don't like that. Ah, fah. Fah. I say fah to all that. Drew says fah. But I go to this. He does. I do. Every oh. year. Mm -hmm. Drops a tab of peyote. Mm -hmm. Lets his freak flag fly. That's how I get the... Well... Kicks the hacky see. sack around. Gets nude. Rolls in the mud. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Who else is on the bill? Do you guys know? Um, uh, Oasis. Oasis is on, yeah. Ooh. Maybe Block Party. That's good. I think. Garbage. Live. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah. 311. I, uh, I gotta go to this. That's what I'm saying. That's a great the bill. bravery. It's, it's the best outdoor concert of the year. Wow, the that's mud. what I hear. So says Doctor Drew. That's right. Madness. Well, is um, trying to think. Well, garbage. Yeah, that'd be a great band to yeah. see. As, cake, as, your buddies. Oh, cake's gonna yeah. be a, madness. Is uh, madness? Did you say? Yeah. Oh, I gotta wow. get out there. Has has uh, Oasis been playing? Have they been like uh, out and about? They took a little time off, right? Yeah, yeah, we just did uh, a couple of festivals in Europe, and they uh, they pl they played a few of them. Yeah, they they're back on a full tour. How full the tour. Gallagher brothers uh, hanging together? I didn't I see them eat together. No, they, they were eating separately at the festivals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get along. We get along with Liam. We, I don't. We don't know Noel. We never met him before, but Liam. We yeah, get along I, with. I, uh, I mean, maybe maybe as you know, as you get a little older and the testosterone production goes down a little, and you get the higher levels of circulating estrogen in your body, <laughs> you just. I think you mellow out oh, a little yes. bit. Oh, my, yes. Yeah. I mean, we've had guys who've come in here from bands when they were like 25, well, 26. Before, and we, to be fair, that's pot and brain damage. Pot and brain damage. <laughs> but we, we see them later. You see them like, you know, 7 million metric tons of weed later right. and seven they're years docile. and a couple of rest, and all of a sudden they're just docile. <laughs> they're like old prize fighters. <laughs> hey, Jim, how you doing? <laughs> just sitting around <laughs> looking at the ground. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to hear something off the uh, oh, no, CD yeah, yeah, tonight. I, 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 I really don't. I'm, I'm, re I'm really. I'm really. I'm uh, really. What did you say? I really. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, uh, the Braver is going to be uh, doing my dear, 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 dear friends' uh, show, Carson Daly, on uh, September 22nd. You guys have done his show, I imagine, before. I don't know. This is uh, our first time. First really? Time. Yeah. Ooh. It was great. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What am I looking at? September twenty. Wait, you did it already? No, you aired. You you taped it already. Oh, you taped it. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Nah, who cares? <laughs> like, listen. Oh, damn. Listen, we're, hey, listen, people. Radio we're not even here right now. <laughs> we just suspect it's going to be really good. <laughs> so yeah, when no, you get there, it's, really it's going to be awesome. All right, and uh, also going to be playing. Oh, well, let's see the. Uh, oh, so the inland invasions at the Glen Helen Hyundai Pavilion. Mm-hmm. And uh, also the guys are going to be at the uh, Avalon in uh, Hollywood on October 16th, which is Saturday, Friday, what the, what are we, the 14th? Yeah. 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 Uh -oh. Turn it Gotta off fix when the mic. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Anderson is such a soothing voice. <laughs> Turn it off when you move the mic. And then he waits for me and he goes, yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> what are you making, a porn film or engineering a show? What's that? Ryan? I think he just swallowed his pride. Ryan? This is... We're off to an awesome Hello, story. hello, hello. There we are. What's up? Yeah. Hey. 26, uh, what's up? Um, I have a question. I had uh, my PA done about three years ago. Prince Albert? Mm. Yeah. Through and um, I, my boyfriend didn't like it, so I took it out about nine months ago. 
but it hasn't closed up yet. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, I'm still, like, peeing out of both holes. Nice. And Ooh. he's, like, he's, like, a complaining that there's a funny smell coming from it. Ooh-ooh. Is there? Um, could be. Um, so I was just wondering, like, what could be causing that and why it hasn't started to close up yet. Well, maybe it's infected. That's kind of scary. That can be pretty serious, actually. It doesn't need to ever close up, does no, it? No, it doesn't have to. Well, I mean, you see people walking around. They have, you can see they have a Earrings, hole and an earring and their you know, nose or whatever. Yeah, right? it, may, it may not close up. But, uh, boy, I would see a urologist right away to make sure there's not something in there up inside that's uh, growing, getting infected. Because it doesn't hurt or anything. Well, that's a good sign, but I still would have somebody take a look at it who knows what they're doing. Well, how much... You, couldn't you tell them it wouldn't pus come out or something? Usually, usually, and it would hurt, but again, I, it smells, it's a bad sign. If I sign. had that hole, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't block it up or anything. I would, just, I would just clog up the urethra and pee out of that hole. You know what <laughs> I mean? I mean? It, it it's right, underneath. It's underneath. Like, it smells un- more so, like you said, like after I've worked out. After I go to come back from the gym, it smells a little more like if I've been sweating. All right. Well, the smell from infection is anaerobic bacteria, and that's what grows. That what tends to proliferate during a in a workout. Well, you doesn't no air, air it doesn't there. everyone's area yeah, smell ab- after the absolutely. Gym? But I mean, after a shower and in that little hole that's moist, that's away from the air. The yes, things can grow in there. But still, wait a I, second. You you take a shower and it still smells? No, no, no. Not after a shower or anything. Okay. Just hold like after. On. Hold on, you <laughs> idiot. Wait, 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 hold on. He's like, my junk smells. I think I got an infection. And then it smells more after a good workout. Well, no ass, Sherlock. Right. Of course it smells more. Ooh, oh, 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 well, so, oh, you mean after you work out, but then you take a shot? No, no, just after I work out. Yeah. Th- these guys are geniuses. Yes, yes. Well, well, yeah. well, whose junk doesn't smell after a workout? I know, but maybe he's getting right down there at the toot suite. Well, don't blow the guy after he's uh, <laughs> just been in the... Uh, Spinning class. I was trying to think of a good gay a- aerobic activity. You know what I mean? I didn't want to say pump and iron because I had to fem it up. Yeah. You know, after your jazzercise class, you know, you got the leg warmers up there. You're wearing the dolphin shorts. You know what I mean? Matching matching pastel headband and sweatbands, you know. And the, you know, I have, a, I, have a, I have an idea now. I, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm, this concept. is bogus. Wait, wait. wait. It's bogus. These guys ought to get, like, sequential sort of PA type things and, and then have an instrument. Oh, they could play. Oh. R- literal skin flute. Literal. Literally. Literal. Literally a skin flute. Here's what I would do. Or if, well, really sort of a skin recorder. If I had that hole, because... Right? The, the toughest... The recorder, yeah, be a, a recorder. Yeah, okay. Well, Drew, people... I think a recorder's in the flute family, is Clarinet. it not? Clarinet. Is a recorder's a flute, isn't it? You know, it's like a, 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 a blue jay and a dove are both birds. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's heavy. Oh, this is getting heavy. This whole conversation is heavy. Yeah, I just think the too yeah. sweet idea is just incredible. Well, look, when people say flute, they think flute. You know, they don't, uh, they don't, they don't think Ian Anderson. Yeah. They don't think tall, baby. Right. They think recorder. Here's my point. My point is, is if I had that hole in the bottom of my penis, I would leave it alone. When I got up in the morning with that boner, I would just clog the urethra and whiz straight down. Into the 90, sink. 90 degrees. Right into the sink. Well, I, I would do it in the sink, yeah, <laughs> but normal people would do it in the toilet. You know yeah. what I mean? The, the boner's going straight out. You block off the end. The whiz makes a 90. Pow, it's straight down in the faucet. toilet. Yeah, it's just, it, it's literally going straight down. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Good times. All right. Ryan, Ryan angers Keep me. Going. I don't know no, why. No. Samantha? Hello. You're 20? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I'm going to Rome out of the country in two weeks, and mm-hmm. I have problems with anxiety, and I've, I've been diagnosed with depression like three times. So and that so- could be our good who's on, who's on first bet. Where are you going? To Rome. I know you're going to Rome, but where? Just Ro- to Rome. Ah, you see what I'm saying? I see, yes. You could, you genius, could, I tell you. You could pick oh. enough countries out there, and you could get a good who's on first yeah, bet. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm Let's saying? Work on it. Let's work on it. All right. Hungry. Write that down. Samantha? Hello. Yeah. yeah. So what's your, what's your question? You've had you've okay. had professional advice. You've been told to take treatment. Now what's going on? All right. Well, I was on Zoloft for like three months. Probably like I stopped being on it like three months ago because Why? it started to like mess up my life. I couldn't wake up in the morning and stuff. Okay. All so. Right. I smoke weed, like, on a regular basis every day because it calms oh, well. me down. Well, that's why you have the depression and anxiety. Second country be hungry. Ooh. I'm going to Rome, hungry. All right, so why don't you eat something and find a destination? You see what I'm saying? It's a good who's on first bit. We can work it out, fellas. Get the beats. Get the beats down. 
I do ran. it, you know, maybe at your yeah. concert. Samantha, Samantha yeah. think, <laughs> the, the, I ran. Marijuana <laughs> eventually, <laughs> when people use it daily, it eventually causes marijuana and anxiety and panic, Please. ultimately, and agoraphobia. But I've had, like, even before I smoked, I was, I've always been depressed, like, ever since well, I was... Well, if it were a really good young. treatment for depression, we would suggest it, but everybody has, everyone who becomes an addict uses drugs initially to feel better. That's okay. why they take so drugs. Question. Okay. And you're, as long as you smoke pot, your depression and anxiety is completely, completely untreatable. It's why, impossible. Why are you biological. going to Rome? I'm studying abroad for three months. This is not going to be a pretty thing for you. Wow. You're 20. You, you, are you paying for this? Who's paying for this? No, my parents are. Wow. That's a good but I parents. I work on my own as well. I live with them. All right. You don't pay, I'm not paying one penny of this, though. Well, that's this that's good. Well, that's I good have, parenting. I have loans. I have loans that I'll pay when I graduate, but they're paying for like half of it right now. Okay. You, are you good to your parents? Yeah, I'm really good. I get good oh, grades okay. and everything. Okay. Well, I right. I want to know like when I go over there, I'm not going to be like smoking, and so I know I'm just it, it, my anxiety is just like it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be bad. You're gonna get very seriously depressed. Really? Yeah. All right. When so what, Drew? See a doctor? Well, you you need to talk to a psychiatrist who's used to dealing I've with addiction seen, problems. I've seen like three of them though, and like who is I've used to, who's who's used to dealing with addiction. It's a little bit of a different approach, and uh, you're gonna have to have somebody talk to you about this because there's actually a high incidence of suicidality for about six months after people stop smoking pot regularly when they're already depressed. All right. Okay. All right, hey, but good times. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Some of my other countries I figured out. Uh, Iran would be good. Oh. Greece, Turkey. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Where are you yeah. going? Yeah. Go to Rome. Then uh, get to Turkey. Get to Turkey. I don't care what you're eating. Tell me where you're going. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we it's work hysterical. It out. Hysterical. Well, we work the beats out. Obviously, this you know this is loose. We're just throwing it up, seeing what sticks. But yeah. I think I think we got a pretty pretty good shell good of concept. an idea good here. Concept. Pretty strong pretty strong concepts. Better than who's I, I don't know who's yeah you know, who's playing center field. I don't know. You know what I mean? That doesn't make sense. These are all countries people have heard of. Speaking of countries, time to play a little something called Germany or Florida. I'm sure these guys have been to both places. You guys have been to yeah, Germany and Florida, yeah? Yeah, yeah I've done a so, few tours so, in Germany. So you know all the all the bizarre stories emanate from either Germany or Florida. And I'm not just talking about, you know, I'm not talking about bank robbers and stuff. I'm just talking about the guys that, you know, cut their toes off and fry them up and eat them and do just the macabre and the occult. So here's how it works. They call in, they tell us a story, and then we have to guess. Is it Germany or Florida? I'd like to hear the theme song, yeah. Is it Germany? Florida. Florida. Germany or Florida? Let's find out. Thank you, David. How was your hair? Right out. Yeah, big crescendo. That's a, that's a good song. I like that. Put that yeah. wiffle bout down. That's David uh, David Allen Greer. Eric? Good day, Adam and Dr. Drew. I said good day. Now, thanks for humming along to the theme. Go, and, oh, uh, go ahead and give us your uh, Germany or Florida, good please. Day, the bravery. Welcome tonight. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. Germany or Florida. Let's go. You ready, guys? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's get it, let's get it on, shall we? <laughs> yeah, let's go, baby. So you now you know how I feel. Break it down. Let's go. Let's right. get it on. Let's break it down. Let's go. Let's, go. Let's break it down. All right. A mother concerned about what she considers pornography in her daughter's reading assignment wants the book banned. The mother plans to submit a written complaint today focusing on two passages in the book. The mother's complaint focuses on two passages. One describes an oral sex encounter between the main character and her male cousin. The other describes the main character's sexual fantasies as she grows toward puberty. Germany or Florida? Well, in Germany... That stuff is included in the C. Dick run. Yeah. I mean, that starts in first grade. The, the weird sexual yeah, stuff? Yeah, of course. Really? C. Jane. Yeah, well, they, they have a strange sexual appetite over there. And we'll and say that. And we know our country's going through a whole thing about this. Well, we get weird pretty easily on that yeah. stuff. On the other hand, could be a... Hmm. Could be a... I feel like they're less likely here. to complain about it. The Germans? Germany, maybe. Well, yeah, that's that, what that, I'm thinking. That's a very yeah. interesting point. Yeah, that would be more... Just be more part of the social fabric yeah. and not... Raise as many eyebrows. So, so we're, for that reason, you're thinking you're thinking Florida. I'd lean towards Florida. All right, hmm. all right. I'm thinking Florida. Florida, Michael. I don't see how it could be Germany, but it may be just a really good Germany. I'm go with John and go Florida. It's good, right. good, good reason. Okay, all right. So uh, we're all Florida on yeah. this one, yeah. yeah. Eric, well, we're all going for quiet well, down. Actually, it's a uh, mobile Alabama. I'm just kidding, guys. It's uh, a. <laughs> 
It, it's Florida. All right, there we yeah, go. Yeah, thank you. Got it. Hey, question yeah. for the bravery. Uh, when are you guys coming out toward Virginia? Are you guys um, coming at, anytime soon? Yeah, I think we're coming to Virginia. I think are you this coming month. to Norfolk or Virginia Beach, you know? Um, we don't, we're not sure exactly. We're just, uh, we're starting now. We're three days into, like, two months. Two and a half uh, months U.S. tour. I think we're, we're definitely coming to Virginia either this month or next, for sure. Who are you guys, well, you, who are you guys touring you, with? Uh, we're taking on a band from England called Maximil Park. Okay. And, uh... By that rough. time, it might be international noise yeah, conspiracy. Yeah. If you guys, if you want to just go to their website, yeah. the uh, www. The com, I'm it's there. Yeah, go there. Okay. Should yeah, it should have the tour lineup, right? It should have the schedule. We've got it's that all there. and so much more. Oh uh, yeah, pictures. Oh pictures, Lots of pictures. True. You want to do some business? Yes, because uh, um, Eric reminded me. I was thinking, boy, Eric's going to win tonight. Isn't that nice? Eric, everyone that gets on the air that's 18 years or, or older, which will include Eric, will get two tickets to see Crywolf. And this is about a couple of, a group of students who sort of create an online murder fantasy that comes to life. Imagine that. Wow. And everyone who wins tickets also qualifies to win a ticket to see Block, tickets to see Block Party anywhere they're playing in Europe. Ooh. This Friday opens everywhere. You lie, you die. Cry Wolf in theaters. Yeah. It's, you know, I, uh, I, I could go through the European schedule there and probably work my who's on first uh, business <laughs> out with that Block Party. I thought Dusseldorf. Schedule. I don't know if that fits. Dusseldorf. <laughs> She's got to mean something. <laughs> All right, let's uh, keep on keeping on and speak to uh, Christina, who's 19. Christina? Hello? What's up? Nothing much. How are you? Oh, nothing. You're calling from La Cunada? Yeah. Yeah. I think I used to live in La Crescenta. It's a lot different. Oh, my goodness. Are you serious? <laughs> Do you go to CB? Well, no, no, no. No, no. I was, I was an adult. But La, La Crescenta... Well, well... Yeah, I mean, chronologically, my I lived with three guys. My uh, La Crescenta is like La Cunada's uh, retarded cousin who did a yeah. little bit of time and yeah, coke and a lot of coke. Yeah, or speed no, no. really, a lot of what, speed. What La Cunada is is it's it's not it's not the cousin that was born retarded. It's the one that did one too you know one too many rails a crank and then had a small aneurysm and has a little paralysis on its right side. Hard to tell if they lost anything mentally because he never was very smart. That's what La, that's what La Crescenta is to La Cunada. Yeah? Yeah. All right. All right. So effing amazing. Thank you. Oh, okay. What's up, baby doll? All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, I have an intense fear of people touching me. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if there was some, like, medical condition of, like, what's that called or why that is. Uh, is there anything about your history we need to know? Have there been any traumas around being touched or beaten or dropped uh, or anything like not that? Not that I know of. I was never, like, sexually abused or anything like that. You have no re recurring dreams of anything? No. How about just the percentage of people? There's just a certain amount of people on the planet that just have a foible or phobia yeah, or symptom. whatever could, it is, and they just, they just don't like being touched or they don't like being looked at or they yeah. freaked out about the doctor or they don't yeah. like airplanes, you know? Yeah, that's I mean, a sort of, of constitutional think, thing. Well, think all the people that don't like flying or don't like whatever, but they've never been in a plane crash right. and their dad wasn't a pilot. But, but those people, I mean, you can you can sort of look at those people and see characteristics of anxiety disorders and things and control issues, that kind of stuff. And so, uh, Christina... Um, it, to describe to me what it is you're afraid of when you get touched. Um, I don't know if I'm afraid of anything specific. It just like makes me sick inside. Like I, I get any nauseous. kind of touch. Any kind of touch. Um, if if someone's touching me, yeah. Like I can are, are, other people. So if you are brush you? up against somebody walking in line at McDonald's, you want to vomit. Yeah. Are you virgin? Um, no. Well, how'd that well, work? How, out? How do you, yeah. How do you tolerate that? I was extremely intoxicated. Mm. And and do you, so, do you have a boyfriend? Um, not anymore. No. Did he touch you? Um. Yeah. And that was okay. Um. Yeah. At the time, I was medicated. I had Prozac, and so while I was on that, I was okay with touching. Do you have trichotillomania? Pull your hair. Pull out? your hair out and your eyebrows and that stuff. Um. I don't. That? No. No, I mean, because Prozac usually, unless you're, they really pretty clearly weren't treating a mood disorder. They were treating obsessive compulsiveness. I bet. Listen, if this and was so my kid, I'd just send her out to one of those outdoor, out, outward <laughs> bound programs. This Break is like, her. look, listen, baby, start <laughs> repelling with that black guy, would you? <laughs> and then fall back. Trust they'll catch you. Trust. Fall back. Trust. So impressed with that game. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to trust. 
six six weeks ago, none of these kids would have taken the Lipton plunge with just some strange folks. But now they trust. Eh, they don't care. They're right. tired. Right. They're, like, been, they're getting by. Yeah, they've been running. They've been they've been running on that rope all day. They just fall backwards. They're right. tired. Right. Yeah. No, is that really? How much does that do for your self esteem? Uh, no, hiking. I don't, nothing. Do people back in the day, you know, they just hiked all the time and they feel like great about themselves? <laughs> What's a rock have to do with that? You know what I mean? Just, just, just. All right. All right. I'm just saying. Hey, here's the deal. Why can't there be TiVo involved with these you yeah. know, rehabilitation? Right. Why do you have to go out to the forest? Yeah, of course. You know, you, you, why do you have to sleep on the ground to feel better about yourself or eat, uh, you know, dinty more canned stew? How about you make me up a nice sandwich, I watch some TiVo, and I feel good about myself? Inward bound. <laughs> That's going to be my program. Couchward bound. Send me your teens. <laughs> Send me your teens with emotional problems, behavioral problems. I'll put them on the sofa, watch about nine hours of TiVo. And we'll all, all just eat, and everyone will fall asleep. It's going to be great. They'll be docile when I send them back to you. So, Christina, do you have other obsessive-compulsive qualities? Um, uh, I used to shower compulsively, yeah. Right. So that, that's what I was sort of fishing for when you said you get sick when you touch people. M what I expect you to say was you're afraid of catching something from them or something of that order. Yeah. You know what? You, do you have money? Do I have money? Uh, yeah, does your family yeah. have money? No. They're poor. You live in La Cunada? Um, we're kind of. We just moved to La Cunada. What? Do you, well, so your house had to cost two million bucks. Had to. Oh well, yeah. That's what they're All poor. Right. They're yeah, two million bucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, because you know why? Uh, two million's not what it used to be. Then. Right. There's no. There's, there's not. A, there's no Mexican day laborers who have this problem. Oh, right. come, can't get clean. Oh, the shovel. Who touched that shovel before me? The Pedro. Enrique, who touched uh, that shovel? Oswaldo. Oh, my God. Where's my Purell? No, poor people don't have this because it's a luxury. It's like it's like people, it's like you're stranded on some island. You're looking to survive. Uh, magically, there's none of this hand wiping and compulsive showering. This is what happens when you have money and you're smart. And your brain just starts working on but stuff. My question is, why doesn't she stay on the Prozark, which takes care of the problem? Any sharecroppers or migrant field workers that ever have this? They do. This, they get weird stuff. She's yeah, they do. She should limit the, you know what they start doing? They start building fancy rituals to the corn god to make the rain fall. So, so be it, but they get their ass to work. Yeah. That's all I'm well, saying. Well, they can't. They're busy doing their rituals. No, I'm, no I, I'm saying when when the poor people have this, someone just smacks them with a belt, tells them to get, get hopping, oh, and they just go out and work. A belt? Well, that's their dad, but you know what I'm saying. Christina? I, I'm nope. just saying, magically, nobody I grew up with in North Hollywood had had this disease. Nobody had anything. There was no inborn allergens. There's no spore problems. There's no mold in anyone's house. Nobody, nobody had this. These manias or these yeah, things. You're too busy it's trying like to survive. Yeah, everyone just get the after work, would you? Just get busy. Start cleaning some carpets. Try not to flunk out of your class and let's oh. go. But that was about it. Nobody yeah. even thought like it wasn't an option to to do this. Yes? Yeah, you're right. We've now made it a viable option for everybody. I think people just watch TV and go, I think that might be me. That could be me. I like to take a shower. I got a problem. I'm not going to work. I got to stay home. That's what happens. People need a little kick in the ass, a little tough love. You know in, what I mean? Inward yeah. bound. Inward, inward, inward bound. bound. Inward bound. That's right. That's where, that's, that's where, okay. I, that's where I get my I need my to go inward love. to Christina and ask one last question. Drew, let me ask you this. No. Let me just say this. Quiet down. Hey, stop picking at yourself. What do you got? The, you got that I problem got, too? I got OCD, sure. Leave yourself alone, would you? Okay. He's been washing his hands too much. No, <laughs> Drew's just like picking, like picking and scratching. You're like a you're like I'm a active tonight. Like a weird dog. Yeah, yeah calm down. You're slamming stuff around. And I'm hot too. It's like hot. hot. I, you know what? Menopause. <laughs> Menopause. Menopause. <laughs> I'm in it. Here's the thing, Drew. There needs to be a doctor, and this could be you, where you bring your kid who doesn't really have a problem to the doctor, and they sit down, and they start evaluating, and then they start yelling. Shut up. Get to work. Get. Go. You're fine. Go. Max now. Get. You know what I mean? Yes. I'm not going to... Not going to uh, prescribe you any medication. Uh, there's well, no it, rituals to go through. Just a kick in the ass I to saw get to work. A mad TV skit like this where the guy says, I, "I found there's two words that are very effective and very useful. It's very important. I want you to write to pull, yeah, pull out a piece of paper, write it down. I want you to write these things down. Whenever you get these panicky feelings, whenever you feel like throwing up when someone touches you, here are the two words. Are you ready for them? You ready? Stop it. Cut it out. <laughs> yeah, like, that's you it. can. You, you, you know, we're not as insane as we think we are, I and mean, we do. We used well. First off, Act as if is what you're saying. 
act as if you're saying, but you, there used to be a stigma that surrounded being off emotionally, and people sort of cinched up their tie and pretended like they had it together because they didn't want society pointing at them. Now, they don't want society not pointing at them, right. which has screwed everything up. Yeah. It used to be whatever your problem was, that was your own private shame. I mean, hell, if you were... Where are you guys like, from? Uh, from New York. From where? From Manhattan. Manhattan. No, you know, no, we didn't grow up in Europe or anything? Anybody? No. No. Pre the president was Europeans in a... still have that. president was in a yeah, wheelchair and scared people would find out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have no pictures in the wheelchair. Help yeah. me out of this wheelchair. I can't yeah. let people find out I have polio. Now, as you see, he'd be running on a polio platform. <laughs> oh. <laughs> American disability? Get behind me. Yeah, come on, buddy. What are you saying? I can't be president because I, I can't I can't run a 40? Come on. I'll sue all of you. Yeah. You're not voting for me. I was Americans with Disabilities Act. Let's go. Yeah. Nope. They didn't do it. Oh, it was a different time. Wait, wait, wait. I got to know why Christina didn't stay on the president. Well, see, that's your OCD. Oh, yeah, it is. I don't need to know. I need to know. <laughs> Christina. Christina. Yeah. Why didn't you stay on the Prozac? Um, I'm bulimic, and so oh, there I... There we go. So you see? There's another problem that's, poor people don't have. Yeah, that's true. All yeah. right, so Christina, there's a whole big psychiatric syndrome here. Are you in treatment for the bulimia? Uh, yeah. All right. So, and, and I would... And Prozac, by the way, is good for bulimia, too. So you might want to uh, follow direction, Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now, are now as a, as a bulimic, I'm, I don't ever know what weight you are when you're bulimic. You could be up or down. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Where are you in your weight, Christina? Um, I'm like 140, and I'm five feet tall. All right. So, See, right in there. I just want to know what kind of snacks to put out for my Inward Bound program. I'm a <laughs> charter member. You know what I mean? Mm. It'll be awesome. What do you like, Funyuns or Bugles? Bugles, of course. <laughs> How dare you? I don't know. How dare you? I'm going to have them Didn't all. Bugles have something else that came out with them that disappeared? <laughs> I don't know, bugles but I miss like those trumpets goddamn or something. bugles. I'll They're around. They're around. Are they? I, they? They surface every once in a My while. My kingdom for a bugle. <laughs> Go on a bugle run. <laughs> the bravery is uh, in studio tonight. Have you guys ever had a bugle? Oh, yeah, of course. Bugles I haven't seen awesome. them in a while, though. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the better salty snacks. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah you, know, you know, the bugle, the bugle is... The bugle Michelle's is, never had one, I can tell by looking never at her face. Never had a bugle. Never heard of it. It's a shame. Yeah, the bugle is sort of you. sort of what the um, I'm trying to think. There's such there's a lot of foods that people like. Like like I think people like an egg salad sandwich, but they would never <laughs> order one. You'd never go to a you'd never go to a restaurant and order an egg salad sandwich. You would order one thousand turkey sandwiches, which you didn't like as much as the egg salad, but you would just never order the egg mm -hmm. salad. I think you eat like uh, seven million Doritos to every one bugle. But I bet someone would like to see some bugles. Absolutely. Give me bugles and egg salad. Or give me death. <laughs> You're such a patriot, Drew. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. The Bravery. In tonight, John and Michael. Uh, the guys are going to be playing the Inland Invasion, which is coming up this Saturday at the uh, Glen Helen Pavilion. I was yes, loading sir. up my iPod today, and uh, I was asking one of my sons fashioned himself sort of a music, mm, he knows music, playing the guitar and stuff. And I go, give me some music. I'm going to put something put on. He goes, oh, here it hands me the Bravery thing. He goes, this is the best song of the year. Wow. Yeah. Best song of the year. Yeah. Good taste. And you can hear it at the best outdoor music festival of the year. He's going to, believe me. <laughs> well, I just, uh, you know, just heard the uh, whole lineup ran all the way down. That is going to be a great concert. All right. We will uh, also, you just go to www.thebravery.com and you can find out where the band is going to be. And they'll be coming to a town near you or your town. <laughs> Amanda, I never say your town. <laughs> Town near you, <laughs> theater near you, whatever. Something's near you. Uh, yeah. How much, your, your town's near you. Yeah, right. I guess it is. Uh, yeah, would almost have to be. Even if you moved, your town would be near you. You can't escape your town. We'll pay your gas fare. Yeah, whatever <laughs> it takes. Amanda. Yes. You're thirty. Yes. You like to be tied up and called names. It says. Oh yeah. All right. Oh, well, all right. Wow. Slow down. It says during sex, which is good because that's you know at the workplace. <laughs> you bitch. Yeah. That's me at my best. All right. That's uh, weird, but not necessarily that weird. You coke whore. Did something happen to you? <laughs> What's that? I said, keep talking to me. You're yeah. going to get some weird Whoa. stuff going? You, you sound weird, though. What's up? What happened to you? Anything? Well, no, not really. I mean, uh -huh. just like a normal childhood and everything, but I just Except? meant that. 
every time I have sex, I really can't get off until someone calls me names or... You stinking whore! <laughs> were, were you, so you're never verbally abused, physically abused, or sexually abused? No. I mean, just uh -huh. a typical, you know, how your mom would get mm -hmm. mad at you and spank you or something, but not... No, wait, now tell me about that. That's not, that's not typical. What, well, it is. Would she, would she pick something up to hit you with? No, 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 no. Would this happen all the time? No, 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 no. Yeah, really, you really just used nine no's and where you could have used two. No, 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 well, okay, that's me. you. I mean, you like you like rough trade. That's your thing. I mean, most most girls like a little tap on the behind sexually. I've, uh, She's found. thirty. How come? Are you married? No, I'm not. What? No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Well, it's only one no. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, once you get you see, here's the thing: once you train people to uh, thirteen or fourteen no's, then one no means maybe. <laughs> Well, you know I mean? let's let's hear more. I think there's something under that. Yeah. Uh, why? Why is she well, not yeah. married? Were you in a, Were you married? Um, actually, I was married for six years. Yes. Mm -hmm. What happened? Um, he was in the military, and he came back, and he wasn't. Uh, he kind of just he came back from after the war, and he wasn't so nice. So we had to separate. So you're mm -hmm. with you're with guys that are abusive. You like yeah. to be <laughs> demeaned and abused. Well, and you, do you like to be tied? I mean, you physically want to be tied up oh, for yeah. sex. Yeah. And how much? How much abuse? Like, do you want to be strangled? Do you want to be hit on the behind? Um, I like to have a couple marks on me. Yeah. Mm, wait a minute! No, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. It just something, something. Did you? You on painkillers? You on painkillers or something at one time? No. No addiction. No, no addiction. All right, let, let's start. Let's start breaking you down here for a okay. second. Your parents. What did your dad do for a living? Um, he was a uh, worked out. He was a logger. Wow. wow. In Pittsburgh? No, I lived somewhere else before Pittsburgh. Oregon or Washington, I trust. No, it was still California. Uh -huh. Go ahead and go ahead and tell us the city, uh, so we don't have to, you know, flip over all the cards. <laughs> Grass Valley. Oh, okay. Course. Well, I never heard of it. All right, so you lived in uh, Grass Valley, and your dad was a logger. Uh -huh. He must have been a tough guy. And did he drink? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no, there's no logger who doesn't drink. Yeah. You can't get your <laughs> logging license. As a matter of fact, your profession is named after a kind of beer. Yeah. <laughs> logger. Yeah. So logging ID has to say, you know. <laughs> you know, you're in trouble. So, so he's an alcoholic. He's a scary guy. He's a big guy. Did he, did he, do you see him do violent things when you were growing up? No, actually, he he was um, he was a great dad. He never did. He never yelled at my mom or yelled at the kids. Um, but he wasn't scared. But what? He was scary around town. He did get in a couple of fights. He was known as a fighter. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so you have to live around all that aggression and stuff. It must be kind of scary. But he was a dirty talker too. <laughs> oh yeah. Were you exposed Lockers. to any sexual material growing up? Mm, no. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. I don't understand how a guy is a is an alcoholic. He's a drunk and he's violent and he gets in a lot of scraps. He's scary to town. be around, but he's perfectly great. Oh, and then, yeah. then he then he comes puppy, home puppy and he's, he's he's a CPA. No, it doesn't work like that. No, you come home drunk. You come home drunk, you're scary and everyone avoids you and you're fine. Something missing. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can keep uh, mining. Amanda. Yeah. So we find it um, curious. curious. That that this guy drank a lot and he and he brawled a lot, but then he never brought any of that home. We're not curious. Impossible. We're f we're calling it impossible. Oh. No, it wasn't impossible. So I've he. Never seen him lay a hand on my mom. He never laid a hand on us. Well, how do you even know he was an alcoholic? Well, he did drink a lot, but at home, and then you know after he wouldn't come home till like two in the morning or something. Didn't that scare you as a kid? Mm, no, actually, I didn't. Why not? I I don't know. You have Maybe a big scary dad. <laughs> yeah, the, what you don't know is that there's something was happening to you, and you're just not aware. Huh, of but it. you must have heard your parents fighting all the time, yeah, at I didn't least. Yeah, that. No, uh, that did happen. All right. And uh, would your dad raise his voice? No, it was my mom. Oh, it's so Maybe she's been... maybe she's the violent one. She spanked yeah. you, said a bunch of times. We don't know if he's actually a big, scary logger. He could be one of those tiny loggers. No, he could he... be one of those gnomes, you know. Yeah, like wear logging outfits. Yeah, with the big hat. Yeah, the pointy hats. Hat. Yeah, cone hat. 
Uh, so, man, what was your mom like? Speaking of cones, where are those bugles? <laughs> Hungry for some bugles. Michelle's looking them up online. Amanda? I have some delivered here. <laughs> Why do you right. do that? You Drew, you... <laughs> yeah, Drew, you can't... You can barely get stuff out of the vending machine here. You think you can get bugles delivered? Amanda? Yes. Uh, mom, all right. What was mom like? What was mom like? Um... Just yelling, screaming type. All right, that's all that scary stuff when you're a kid. Having a yelling, screaming mom, a huge scary alcoholic dad that fights in the streets until two in the morning. That is not a normal childhood. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to affect you adversely, and it doesn't have to be devastation, but it affects you. I think it did. Yes. At the very least, it makes you attracted to scary, yelling, abusive, demeaning guys, and that's what you like in bed, of course. Yeah, I mean, I'm and sure you, you hook up with some of those guys, and that doesn't work out because that's what you think of in terms of your love relationship. These scary abusive, yelling, out of control, crazy people. All right. You need well, a little work on that. You be realistic about that and maybe open up to people who are not so dramatic. Mm. Yeah. How about some therapy, baby doll? And you're 30. Come on. What you're you're 19. Let's go now. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Come on. Get a hand in. <laughs> yeah, I was, Am Amanda, if you weren't so goddamn boring, <laughs> I, I, it's like, it's like you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm a moth to your retarded, boring flame. I can't stop talking to you, but you're making me angry, and that means something was done to you. So I don't know what you want us to tell you, but you're boring me to death. So get some goddamn therapy. You're 30, would you, you idiot? All right. Time. There we go. So I can't want, see quick. you. Here's the, whole, here's the deal. I'm sure you got a nice ass, Amanda, and I'm sure you get a ton of mileage out of that, but I can't see your nice ass. You're in Pittsburgh. I'm over here, and I know you get a ton of mileage out of doing that. Uh, I like to do a spank. I got a nice ass, but I can't see you, so you're just annoying to me. <laughs> it's doing us a favor by letting us help her with her stupid problems. Just go let a guy tie you up and beat the crap out of you. What do we One, care? Stop calling us. One, two, three. Put that wiffle bat. Wiffle bat. True. Like, come out right. <laughs> Yeah, we'll play it for these guys so they can understand what that was. Micrograms of est yeah. ethanol estradiol, All which right. is uh, ethanol estradiol. But the, it's the, it's <laughs> no, the, pro, it's the progesterone. <laughs> it's the levonorgestrel. Uh, and where is levonorgestrel? Or, <laughs> or the norethindrone. <laughs> no, the, put that put that wiffle ball back down. Girl. Come in the house. <laughs> so behind, I'm sick of these kids, man. <laughs> David Al Greer turning. Uh, chemical descriptions of the morning after pill into the names of young African American children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a genius. One, one. Here we are. Twenty three. Yeah. That's up. Drew, you can my hear the thing you can hear about Dave is you powering through your your thing like yeah. a, like when I throw my dog in the pool and it yeah, just yeah. keeps paddling yeah. and I hold its tail and yep. it's like <laughs> it'll always be that way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead, Juan. All right. I just heard uh, Dr. Jupiter saying something about um, OCD disorders and uh, hair pulling. Yep. And at the time he said that, I was yanking on my eyebrows. Nice. Chewing on the hairs. Chewing on the hairs. Oh, that's <laughs> another one. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's um, And then uh, Adam had mentioned that uh, poor people don't do that. Yeah. Oh, oh and Juan's you're the poor guy. Well, well, just because the name's Juan doesn't mean he's poor, but but it helps. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. That's what he was driving while he was pulling his eyebrows out. You know, welfare and stuff. So. Are you, are you, so you're poor. You're poor now, Juan. No, I'm a little lower middle class, maybe. All right. Making about well, thirty-five thousand a year in ooh, ooh. No, look at I, Juan. I'm not saying poor people can't have these symptoms and these problems. I'm just saying they have to go to work in the morning. Uh, yeah. You may tug your eyebrow out while you're driving your rusted out Vega to work, <laughs> but you're driving to work. Well, the the, the OCD uh, that you're describing, the hair pulling, does respond to medication very nicely. It doesn't always respond to talk therapies or anything like that. And the eating of the hair is, is a sort of a heating. It's a it's a sort of a quantum leap up on the hair pulling. It's oh, really? Yeah, yeah and it a couple actually, of zeros yeah, behind it. It makes me concerned. You have something called the Pika syndrome, where you're mm -hmm. eating people that eat ashes out of ashtrays and dirt and that sort of thing. It's a sign of iron deficiency. No. So, yeah. So you Not may you fun. well it may be the point is you should see a doctor about this because you need a blood count just to be sure. Juan, you you eat it. your hair? You eat the hair you I pull just, out? Kinda, just just, may, just mainly like on my chin and my eyebrows. I'm not like pulling out the hair out of my head. No pubic hair, Adam. Do you That's swallow it? it? God, no. Oh, how dare uh, you. Yes, I do swallow it. <laughs> you do swallow it. There's more iron in pubic hair. That would hair. be gross. Is you're bringing up a fur ball soon. My cat... <laughs> yeah, it helps with the bamboo. I always loved oh. it when my cat would bring up a fur ball. You didn't see Shrek, to, obviously. Going to convulsions. Shrek 2, rather. That's I didn't hilarious. see Shrek or Shrek 2. Yeah, no. it was a big, huge... 
Just yeah, you know why? Because I'm an adult. Antonio Banderas plays the, the, a cat. That movie's not for kids. No, yeah. no. Uh, absolutely see, the braver and I saw it. Oh, I see. Well, <laughs> so we're man, man, man enough to admit it. Not only your age, you. but your sexuality. <laughs> my my <Yeah>. preference. <laughs> yes. All right. The bravery is in the uh, studio tonight. We're going to take a uh, quick break. Oh, we should hear a song. Yes, we yeah. should. We're going to have to wait till well, the next break. We've been break. negligent. But yes. we'll come back. We'll hear a song from the uh, bravery, and we'll take more calls, and we'll do all that after this. Yeah, everybody. It's the love line of Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. You know, whenever uh, I don't know, the bravery's in here tonight, John and Michael, you know, I got my little my little rundown sheet, my little beat sheet here. It says when the band's going out on tour. And then and then whenever it says CD, it says the top, always says the title of the CD. But if it's, if it's self titled, it always just says self titled. And uh, they could just go ahead and write the bravery. Yes. They could write CD. The bravery. This is self-titled. Every once in a while, I get caught napping. I see yeah. self-titled. I have to look around a little yes, bit. Yes, yes, yes. Go and write that. Yeah. You know, it was, it was funny. <laughs> I was, I was doing, I was doing a, do a little TV show on uh, Comedy Central, eleven thirty. Well, mine's Monday through too. Thursday. Peru's on yeah. tonight. Right. Good night. Too late, Adam Crow on Comedy Central. Uh, I take calls, and the call they write on a card. They're like twenty-three, and they write, the, they write the person's name, and they write the person's age. But when once in a while they don't have the person's age. So it says Lisa, and then they have two X's in parentheses. And it's like, well, first off, that means 20. Yeah. That's Roman numerals for 20. But if you don't have the age... That's supposed to mean girl? No, no, it just means nothing. X, just X means, like two X chromosomes? Well, like, true. That's, that's the scientific <laughs> mind. For me, to me, it means medium, medium to hard porn. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I look for triple X. Yeah, I'll yeah. use two, you know, any yeah. port in a storm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. But here's, there's a weird thing in life, like when you don't have something, you write you something. Fill it in. Like you don't, yeah. you don't have yeah. the person's yeah. age, so you put two X's there to let me know you don't have the person's age, which makes me confused because I'm now focusing on that, wondering what that's right. supposed to mean or why you put it. If you put nothing, obviously... I'm not going to shout H out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So here's my new policy. When the uh, CD is self-titled, you need to write the name of the CD no matter Good what policy. the name of the CD is. Good policy. Yeah? I mean, yeah. No, we have, don't have time for a song anymore. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we don't? Uh, what if the how long is the song? Their album self-titled? Three minutes. Let's They're do it right short. now. Right yeah. now. Here we go. It's kind of close, guys. I don't know. Here right. we go. What are we doing? Song? Song. Song? Go. Song. Yes. It's called... Honest Mistake. Honest Mistake. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. The Bravery in studio tonight. They're going to be uh, playing at the uh, Inland Invasion, which is coming up at the uh, Glen Helen. Used to be the Blockbuster, wasn't it? Then it was the Devore or <laughs> some crazy equipment. Now it's crazy the Hyundai originally. Pavilion. you got to see that place. It's huge. It had better be huge. huge. There's going to be some great bands playing. Huge. Yeah? Right, Michelle? Mm -hmm. Huge. Drew, you'll be uh, rocking out. I'll be your, rocking out. I think I'm, I'm introducing 311, I think. Are you? Mm. Wow. What an honor mm. it is for you. For me. Yeah, yeah. For me. yeah. Oh, please. All right. <laughs> Not for them. Yeah. All right. You ready to keep rocking? Yeah. Mm. Nikki? 26? Nikki? Hi. Hey, what's up? Um, I just had a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. I had a baby about 10 months ago, and ever since, I've had no desire to have sex. I'm just wondering if this is ever going to change. Or... Are, you still, are you still breastfeeding? No, I haven't been doing did they give you any kind? Time. Did they give you any kind of birth control? Yeah. What are you taking? I was on it before I got pregnant, though, and it never affected my um, sex okay. drive. Are you having any depression or anything like that after the baby? No, uh-uh. This is very common. It usually lasts up to about a year. Sometimes getting on a different birth control pill will kickstart things. Okay. Have you talked to your doctor about that? Is this your first child, you say? Yes. First child. Mm -hmm. And so it, this is very, very common, and it's sort of nature's way of preventing you from having more children, basically, before you're ready to. Mm -hmm. Breastfeeding makes it worse. Uh, you know, progesterone-containing uh, birth control pills make it worse. And, and uh, you know, it's something that's can be treated, but it needs to be paid attention to because it can sometimes get to be sort of protracted. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, Nikki. All right. Thank you. Hey, good times. 
You know, uh, you know how I'm uh, obsessed with that North Hollywood bank robbery shootout from like. I have noticed you brought that up more than a couple ago. times. You, well, you put you brought up the body armor, the banana clips, and the, especially what you've been obsessed with is the fact they were stopped well before they ever committed that crime. Yeah, and given back their gear. Well, the real part I'm obsessed with is the that mom. The, uh, the mom, yeah, the of, mom of one of them is suing again. Well. That got tossed out. I no, I don't think it was a hung jury the last uh, I looked into it. Yeah. You guys know about that mm -hmm. North Hollywood yeah. shootout? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it should have made should have made it to the uh, East Coast. All oh, these guys. I saw a whole special on it that last night. That's why I'm uh, into it. These guys robbed doing a takeover robbery. I did see that a, on the History Channel. I saw it come up on the History Channel. Oh, yeah. but you weren't smart enough to punch it up. I, you know, I... Not man mm, enough. Not what, I what, I, that, I'm not... More figure skating? More figure skating, exactly. <laughs> I need to see that the uh, last year's... From Lake last Geneva. Year's Hi, I'm Dick Grand Buttons. Prix. Yeah, come on, buddy. And, Dorothy that's, Hamill. That's real. It's a real show. I know, I, you know what, I, show. I, unlike you, I don't like that story. It's, dude, it's very disturbing. I was just like, ugh. I well, I'm me. disturbed. Yeah, I'm disturbed by it. Like, I'm disturbed, you know, by, by the Manson family. Right but, uh, but it's provocative. It is. It I, makes I, me I, angry it, at the government. Caught my attention. I thought, I'm gonna get, it's going to upset me to watch this. I'm not going to do it. it. It was frightening. Yeah. These I'm guys, surprised they got as far as they did. Well, they were covered head to toe with body armor. Well, actually, not head to toe. Just neck, neck, neck to, to toe. toe. If one of those cops had squeezed off a round in one of those idiots' brains, uh, they wouldn't have gotten nearly as far as they got. Well, that's what finally happened, right? The one guy, anyway. The one guy killed himself. That's what they think? Well, it's not what they think. It's what they know. The one guy put a gun under his chin, shot his head off after after his, uh, you know... Um, Kalishnikov or, or whatever he was he was firing AK-47 or whatever he had jammed, and he just put the thing put the thing under his head. I mean, uh -huh. he had, they had nine millimeters. They're always planning. I think they're always planning on killing themselves if it ever got to that. Uh -huh. it's just the one guy ended up getting pinned down and ended up getting wounded, and that's where the lawsuit came in. But uh, these guys, well, a couple of crazy, crazy things about this whole story. One is, is yeah, they got pulled over in Glendale. And uh, they uh, opened the trunk, and they just found all this body armor and all these uh, assault rifles. And the rifles had been converted to full automatic. And they had, they didn't have clips. They had drums wow. of ammunition. I mean, they had... You can't what, buy those anymore. Those no. Drums. They, they had they what, what looked like the old Tommy gun, the round cylinders. But these essentially had belts in them. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they just had... And they were uh, not regular ammunition. It was armor-piercing ammunition. And one of them was a uh, one of them had a rap sheet already. One of them was a felon. So this is uh, by the way, you pop the trunk. Uh, this is what the guy is in the trunk of the guy with the rap sheet. And the deal is, is uh, thanks to the NRA, uh, well, there's nothing you can do because they didn't commit a crime with that with those goods. Yeah, yeah, they, they didn't do anything. There was no crime. I mean, there is a crime to have these guns, so they're going to get a slap on the hand. But they didn't. You didn't catch them committing a crime. Uh, first off, that's just called good police work. Right. I would like you to catch these people before the goddamn crime. That's number one. Number two, open the same trunk, find a hefty bag filled with weed. You're going in, baby. You're going in big time. Why? Intent to distribute. Oh, you didn't catch me selling it. Yeah, but you had the stuff. You were going. You were going to sell it. You can't say the same thing about the banana clips. Uh. Can't say the same thing about the police scanner. Can't say the same thing about the ski mask. Huh? And the body armor? No? No? And the maps? Nothing? Can't do that math? How come you get to do the drug math? How come you do the weed math? You can't do that math? Well, weed smokers are bad. Oh, they're evil. They're evil. Those are bad people. <laughs> well, how, not, how dare you? There had to be a little bit of weed buried under all those clips, though. Uh -huh. <laughs> it would have been nice they if they planted a, a dime harder. bag so those guys <laughs> could have done a little time. That'd be my thing. Like if I, uh, you know, if, I, if if I was the commissioner, I'd be like, "Look, everyone, take a dime bag. Here, here's a joint. Throw it in the trunk, filled with grenades and stuff, and that way we can actually have these guys do some real time." Yeah. So that's my whole point. My whole point in life is, why does a guy get intent to distribute if he has a shoebox full of weed, but if he has an arsenal in his trunk, that's no problem because we didn't catch him doing anything. And everyone sticks by it too. No, we didn't get we have to catch him. No, because unless they can no, we don't want to live in a kind of society where we don't yet yeah, we are in that society. In a retarded way. In a in, in the a worst possible way. Backwards yeah. way. So what happened? 
these guys, they got a, got a little slap in the hand. They did a couple of weeks. Then they petitioned for their guns back, and we gave them back to them. You couldn't petition to get your weed back. No. That'd be incinerated. But you, well, And by the way, by the time you got out, you'd be so goddamn old, you couldn't hold a bong. <laughs> but... But for the guns, you're out in three weeks. Guns out, out there. They're out in a couple of months. Uh, they petition. Hey, here you go. Enjoy. Here's your AK-47. Here's your Glock. Mac. Here's your uh, Mac 10. Here, it, t- take it all. Uh, there's probably a couple of items like. Uh, well, you under. I, they're probably apologizing. You understand? We have to keep the armor piercing rounds and the incinerary rounds and the grenade launch. I'm sorry. <laughs> we just say, you know. It was, hey, fellas, it wasn't me. It's my captain. What can I do? My hands are tied. It's good luck. Hey, uh, open the Soldier Fortune this month. Probably get a lot of that stuff from Canada. Just do it, uh, ship it to you. No problem. Sorry. Again, sorry for the inconvenience. They went back. Uh, they made their own body armor. They started, you know, whipping up their own Kevlar and everything. They sewed it all up. And then they just uh, worked out, got high on drugs and stuff. Now, they were they were successful before this. And what? <laughs> they, were, they were stenographers. No, they, they, <laughs> robbed, they, they robbed. They were successful <laughs> robbing banks. Right, right, right. Yeah. One of them worked at a gymboree. <laughs> Come on. They must have been they good at banks. paperwork, too. If, if they could petition to get all their guns back. I... Oh, yeah. No, they used... They used. Uh, they knew they how know to the use, system. They know how to use the system. They planned out. They, they had made $1.5 million robbing oh, other banks in huh. the uh, area over the last uh, year or so. Huh. And uh, they planned it all out. They got it all worked out. They got their little timers all worked out. They did the whole thing. And just cop cars just happened to be passing by as these guys were walking into the bank, but if you watch the footage, the guy's just standing there, and he's just spraying bullets everywhere, yeah, yeah. and they're going through, they're just going through cars, they're going through body armor, they're going through everything. The cops have shotguns and handguns, and there's nothing they can do. Mm-hmm. They're just pinned down. They never got a clean shot. Never, these guys are spraying through cinder block walls, That cops. I mean, we, we have armor-piercing rounds, and you have these these big Soviet-made guns. They just start going through stuff. I mean, car fender's not going to stop a bullet. Neither is a cinder block wall. Neither is, you know, some stucco or some wood or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're just spraying through everything. Everyone was just pinned down. They shot. They put 1,100 rounds into the society. They were shooting at the helicopters, shooting at people, c- civilians, doing everything. And uh, mom, the one guy's mom, mom is suing. Mom's going to sue. Mom's suing. He didn't get adequate health care. <laughs> Who's mom suing? Which, which one, guy? One of the criminals. One of the guys. Yeah. yeah, well, the one guy killed himself, and uh, his uh, his folks aren't suing yet, but uh, the mom... What, what, what's the case? What, what's, what's the reason? Well, they, they, didn't, they didn't get health care there fast enough. They didn't, they didn't get the ambulance, there, wow. ambulance uh, there fast enough, and he died uh, on the ground. And w- w- when they shot, he got into a shootout with the SWAT, and he got into a shootout with the SWAT team was six, eight, they were 12 feet away. They were on the ground. The SWAT was. What happened they're was fighting, he, 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 he took, his feet, right? That's what they're trying. Yeah, to get. he took off in a car. They, he, uh, the SWAT team, didn't mean to run into him. They essentially ran into each other. Wow. It was like one of these things where they both <laughs> just looked across each other. Both their cars were parked right next to each other, and they both flew out of the car and just start having a gunfight from ten feet away. Hmm. I don't know how the SWAT guys didn't get killed, hit. But anyway, they were firing underneath the cars, and this guy got hit eventually enough. He fell, and uh, they basically just they they cordoned off the area. Mm. Then the ambulance won't go into that area, and that's where he died. L- lawsuit from the mom, and uh, she could be getting some money from the city. Everybody, if that happens, let's you and I get some some armor piercing guns and go on a little spree. And then sue. Yeah, it, it was it was a. But hum- if, he, if he threw an ounce of weed. Into the bank, yeah. Been screwed. It was. It well, was Drew. It, it was a hung jury. I, last I checked. I don't want to cry wolf. Oh yeah, go <laughs> by. Go. All baby. callers get on the air tonight. If if we stop talking about this, somebody actually will get on the air tonight. Ooh. It'll probably we'll, be brought tomorrow. We'll anyway. receive. Oh yeah, sure. Two two tickets to see Cry Wolf, which um, comes out in theaters everywhere on Friday. You lie, you die. It's about students who come up with a online fantasy about a murderer who magically comes to life and gets them all. Ooh. And everyone who gets these tickets will qualify to win a trip to see Block Party. Uh, who did the soundtrack from this movie, anywhere they play in Europe. Wow, and they're playing a lot of places. They're announcing it on Sunday. And normally we don't give away much on this show. This is a good one. Yeah. Drew, stop fidgeting, baby. Just put it all away. Put so it, I don't fidget. Putting it away. <laughs> Moving it away. <laughs> you moved it three-quarters of an inch you to the left. in front of me. <laughs> no, it was not front of you, Drew. You it, it, three sixteenths of an inch you moved. It's easier push. Right? Don't monkey, baby. Come on now. What's up, Drew? Come on, baby. Just relax. Yeah, you got to start smoking some weed. <laughs> you got to chill. You know, you need, you need to take a chill pill. Brittany? 
Hello? Hey, you're like one of those guys whose his skin itches all the time or something. You know what I mean? No, like, back, like so uncomfortable in your own my skin. Back just hurts, relax. Back Let's go, baby. It's just the calluses. Let's draw yourself a bath and just relax. <laughs> Brittany? Brittany, it's me. I need to put you yeah, in my in, in, in the bath program. What's happening, baby doll? Oh, my God. I have so much to tell you. All right. You have, I don't think you have enough time for me, but... Uh, All right, well, let's keep moving then. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what else these guys did. All right. I'm just obsessed. I'm obsessed with the fact that the hag of a mom is suing and is going to win or may have won or may have been settled out of court. Mm. Do you understand that, everybody? I, we got to kill the attorneys that put this uh, case out together. Brittany? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, so basically I've been um, best friends with this guy for about a year. We've mm-hmm. been really into each other, just talking, kind of flirting, and um, at the beginning of the summer we started to date. Well, when we started to date, um, I basically knew that he had, like, bisexual tendencies. Like, when he would get drunk, he'd be really in, and all of a sudden interested in the other guys. And that didn't really bother me because I was basically head over heels for this guy anyways. Mm-hmm. Are, you fo- are you following? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You okay, could have said that right. in about one sentence. I was <laughs> yeah. with the guy who's gay, got, uh, the guy who's gay who's, uh, drunk, he used to go after guys. Now what? Okay. Right. Well, basically, since we started dating... Um, a few weeks ago at a party, he got drunk and he kissed this other guy right square in front of my face. No joke. Six feet away. Just kissed him. And um, I got pretty upset. We broke up for about a day. But I took him back because I really I couldn't imagine my life without him, really. I, I, I like him that much. And he's such a big part of my life. So I took him back. But then um, the other day, I got to this big party. And um, he actually hooked up uh, and slept with our other friend. Yeah. All right. And what's your question? What, what's it going to take? Are you cute? Are you hot? I am. You know, I really... I, no, I, 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 no, I believe you. I believe you because you talk and talk and talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, good, well, good, it's not just always like dude, what she's saying is important. You well, need to g- hear good this. Good-looking people are never told to shut up in this society. <laughs> it's the run-ons just, that are giving it away. Yeah, everyone just looks at them. Like, when a hot chick's in person, she's like, and this guy, and then and, 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 and everyone's like, hey, bitch, would you zip it? I'm trying um, to focus no, no, here. No, 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 no. They're, they're all just no, going, no, 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 no. They're all just like, oh, oh, oh. Genius, a lot of, genius. A lot of bobbleheads. Yeah, oh, sweetie, no, Tell that's me more. awesome. No. Look, and they don't, they don't learn. They don't have the self, their self esteem yeah. is not injured enough. They're always really funny too. They think they're very funny. <laughs> yeah, you know the, you know the biggest. Blo- you know, let me tell you the biggest blowhards <laughs> in the world. I'll tell you the biggest blowhards. Blonde girls from New York, from New- Newport. Uh, no. Actually, I got to add rabbis yeah. to this. I don't know what happened, what happened to them, but boy, do they like to the talk. Uh, hot chicks. Yeah. Uh, the other the other blowhards are big like strapping guys all times like the guys who people are scared to tell to yeah, shut yeah, up yeah, oftentimes yeah. they're either super quiet yeah. or they're blowhards yeah. and then uh, then bloggers bloggers <laughs> all right Brittany oh wait now what happened she, to her I don't think she had a question up. well she look there she's she wanted to talk oh now now hold We're on let me three. try this I think she's just showing off all right so the guy the guy's by or he's gay. He's or, gay. Yes, he's saying he's gay. bye-bye to heterosexuality. That's what is your question? Right. Okay. Well, basically, my well, our relation completely started out sexual. Like the first, the first time we like. Brittany, right now, what's your question? Out. What is your question? Okay, in one my sentence. My question is: Is there any chance that that we have? Do we have any chance together? No. 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 How old's the guy? Um, he's gay. He's gay. Completely. He's gay. Well, know. maybe not completely, but he's going that way. Even if it just his right leg is gay, that's enough. Yeah, Brittany, it's chaos. If you're with somebody who's bisexual, declares their bisexuality, and that, that declaration means he's not going to be monogamous. And the reality is that somebody who's that way and confused about their sexual identity more often than not is going to go. Well, all not, the way. not not only that. Not forget about his sexual proclivity. He doesn't respect you. He's not monogamous in your relationship. Right, that's the point. He said bye bye. He's hurting you. And um, he. You like are okay. I always hear that cheaters are always cheaters, but is that like the truth? Like, well, can he ever have a chance to change? Uh, yeah, in his sixties. Well, he, yeah, he's gonna change when, when he all com- the way again. When he commits to right. a guy, when he commits to a guy, he will change. Eventually, he'll start cornholing full time, and that'll be the transition. <laughs> yes. Hey, Brittany, please, please, seriously. Okay. You're done. cute. Just go find some guy that done worships you, would you? Yeah. All right, Adam, when, uh, when you, when if things don't work out with your wife, will you give me a call then? Well, yeah, she's yeah. Well, she we missed... can actually talk before things don't work out with my wife. <laughs> I mean, why, why, why put it off? Yeah, I, don't, I don't want to do that. See, I'm unlike Dominic. I don't cheat. We don't. I don't do the cheating thing. But um, who's Dominic? Dominic, uh, the gay guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, your guy. She had to drop oh, his name. So this is bogus. 
Well, not necessarily. Maybe she uh, just wanted to get back at him yeah, a little bit. Yeah. No, here's the thing about cheating. You don't wait till the wheels come off the wagon because then the wife suspects you of cheating. You cheat when everything's going right. Oh, you know I what see. I mean? Well, that's what people don't understand. The guys, the guys bring it on when uh, they're cheating for their wife. They make things extra good. They bring yeah, yeah. That's when they bring the flowers and stuff. Right. Otherwise, they don't think about that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the uh, I think the other sign that a guy's cheating oftentimes is working out too. When a guy starts taking, you know, taking a little more, a little no, more care of himself. Like, that's when women worry a guy's cheating. When a guy, yeah, but a guy isn't necessarily cheating but, when he does. No, not that. necessarily. No. Well, Drew went out for a jog tonight. You know, so this old lady's <laughs> listening. Yeah. So why would no, you I'm, start working out if you have at least two ladies? Yeah, uh, that, I think right, you're, you're be done. sitting you're, on the couch. Right, right. I mean, I, no, you're you're working out for the new chick is who you're working out for because. Once you're once you're nude for a while in front of the same person, you don't care. But but but, but when you see a new when a new person has seen nude, you know what I mean. You know they do that thing where it's like, uh, you you only get to make a first impression once. Mm. And so I'm saying same with nudity. <laughs> you know what I mean. First time your crack and sack is hanging out, that that pretty much just gets burnt in. That is a great name for a new restaurant. <laughs> crack and sack. <laughs> hey, we got a bottomless salad bowl. Come on down to crack and sack. Bravery is going to be there Wednesday night playing a full set, 7.30, 9 o'clock. Come on down. <laughs> All you can eat. Oh, yeah. The, uh, rib, the ribs are good. Yeah, come for the flank steak down. <laughs> crack stack. That's Waldo's flank steak. <laughs> come for Waldo's uh, flank steak over the crack and sack. All and, you uh, can eat. I got the... Uh, yeah, and I'll tell you, when's the last time I had some great homemade cherry cobbler? <laughs> and coleslaw. Make sure and order it first, though. We bake it fresh. We make our own coleslaw. We make it all on the own premises. That's right. Make our own breads. You like beer? You like wine? We have one of the largest selections in South Pasadena. Come on down. Crack and sack. <laughs> You're joking, but we're serious. Uh, we're going to open this together. It would, it would be a decent... I, I Look, just... You would get enough business just from the people with a good sense of humor, yeah. the super stupid people, and then the people, this, which would be me, the morbid sense of curiosity. <laughs> what the hell? And, and it'd be like... God damn, this place has to be good because that is a horrible, that is a horrible name. Like, how confident must you be? You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. With a name like Crack and Sick, you gotta be good. That, that's the commercial. That's right. I'm just imagining old minor guy. Come down to Crack and Sick. <laughs> Crap Happy Parker's Fried Chicken or Crack and Sick. Thursday night's Fried Chicken Night. Next free. Uh, you know what the best restaurant is that nobody's done yet? Yeah, yeah. Me and Sam were talking about this, a singer in our band. It's called The Last Rites. And the whole Ooh, thing's set up like the prison. last supper. It's oh. the last supper. What's yeah. on the menu is anything you want. Oh. Right. You sit down. All the chairs are electric chairs. At the end of the table is a big red phone. That is awesome. If the mayor calls during your meal, yeah, the it's governor. free. Yeah. Or the governor. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the thing, the thing, and it's like a pinball machine where you just, it just, you get a free game. Like every, you match like every twentieth game. Pop. You know what I mean? The phone lights up. Right. You'd have to do it enough to make yeah, keep people them honest. Back. Yeah. And then that's and that's the thing now. Now it's a restaurant that has no kitchen, though, right? Hmm. They make whatever you whatever you. Well, they you, make whatever, whatever, you, whatever want, you want, or 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 you know, there's another they're sort of there's another making, sort of run. And, and every chair has got to look like Gilligan's Island, you know, dome over the head, oh, yeah, absolutely. electric chair with the big circular. But see, there's a, there's another weird out. angle where somebody says like, uh, I want Colonel Sanders extra crispy fried chicken, and I want a moon pie, oh, and I want you get it from somewhere else. I, I want a Fanta orange drink, and I want a Fresca, and I want some bugles. So yeah, basically, you you just personal have the shoppers, like personal, personal shoppers, shoppers there. Yeah. Right, right. And you have a team of crazy Asians on mopeds. Yeah. They put big bikes. baskets. Right. Big and baskets. The, the priest is the hostess, and they, oh, they like see you to the table. That's uh, awesome. And it's a priest that wears the, those robes, not just not the, just the cup, but you know, the robes that yeah. flow behind. It's, oh, yeah. it's take yeah. the walk, priest. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Vegas, I think, would do it first. <laughs> yeah, we need investors. Well, you need Vegas. Yeah, Vegas is good because you need a 24-hour town, you know, because you oh, couldn't yeah. have the Taco Bell. You know, you want the Bell B for, maybe I'm dating myself, but the point is, is you'd have to have access to just about every kind of beer, every kind of ice cream, every kind. You, you'd have to have the weird stuff, like too. Like Las Vegas. Yeah, it yeah. wouldn't just be like, well, yeah, I want yeah. Coke yeah. and a McDonald's right. burger. Yeah. This stuff could get a little exotic, you know what I mean? All right, take call. I don't know, Drew. Yeah. I don't think I'm ready to take a call. I want to talk to somebody from Northridge. Isn't that where that bank robbery was? <laughs> Last right. Was, was that bank robbery in Northridge? Uh, well, it would be stupid because they called the North Hollywood bank North robbery. North Hollywood bank, yeah. that's right. 
Yeah, it was on Laurel Canyon where I used That's to live. Right, right, right. Uh, let's take a break. All right, let's do it. I'm going to steal that last rights idea. <laughs> wow. All right, it's we'll be uh, Bravery in studio tonight. We'll be right back after this. That's Dr. Who? Dr. Drew. John and Michael here tonight from the Bravery. And we are eating bugles. Somebody dropped some bugles off. Anyway, Moss did. Moss did. Mm. And uh, they're awesome. And Drew's so in love with his bugles, uh, all of a sudden he's become a big uh, the Bravery fan. Because, I want to uh, hear a song. They're like, uh, <laughs> we need to play another Bravery. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's played immediately. Let's play the album. Let's finish the bag. That's just going to be more bugle popping for you, Drew. It's bugle popping time. It's bugle <laughs> popping time. Bugle popping. Hey, Adam. Yeah. Just now all I could hear was mm-hmm. you eating bugles, and it, it could have mm-hmm. been the zoo. It could have easily been the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was laughing. I could barely count you in. Mm. Yeah. Or Homer. Yep. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm. They're really good. Mm. All right, Drew. No more bugles. One more call. All right. Then we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, hear a breakfast song, yeah. song, right? Mm. Taylor? Hello? I don't know if I can do the no more bugle thing. You're 22? Yes. What's up? Adam. Corolla. Well, that was a gay one. Adam's masturbating in the jacuzzi. You're gay. <laughs> wow. Dude, he is. I'm trying to replace the, the kids' pool game Marco Polo with Adam Corolla. You know, I just feel like, you know, 800 uh-huh. years is long enough. It's time, you know, it's time for a new sheriff. You new know? dynasty. Yeah, new dynasty. And this is something I could leave behind. You How know? gay so are you? See. Go ahead, Taylor. Hi. Um. All right. It's bogus. Yeah. That's the only one who does a worse gay voice than Taylor is me. <laughs> Because I can only go, say there, sweetie. That's, a, that's, that's, that's my gay thing. Taylor, please. Hello? Oh. Here's the thing about uh, gay guys. They don't sound novelty gay, except for my assistant. <laughs> Sounds, ooh, like Christopher Lowell. But uh, other than him. But your assistant's playing like a character. Yeah. Like dresses up. Like, oh, yeah. Like him playing him. No, he's, as yeah. A gay guy. Priscilla, queen of the yeah, desert. Yeah. Got that guy showing up at my house every day. Gauchos that he made himself. It's awesome. I think this is the guy that pretends to be a chick, actually. Yes, I think that's who it is. Taylor, are you the guy who pretends to be a chick? No, that's not me. Okay, well, that's a horrible gay voice you're doing. Um. And I'm offended. And as a guy (laughs) who has no gay friends, I... Oh, wait a minute. You have one. I do have one gay. As a guy who has one gay friend, I am offended. I got to get a couple more gay friends. Yeah, you do. Yeah. What's the matter with you? We got Michelle. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, hey, hey. yeah. Well, you're lesbian. I don't think you're lesbian. gay. I need a gay friend. <laughs> I need a lesbian friend. I need one everything. So when people complain, like, oh, you're a racist, you're a homophobe, you're like, what do you mean? I got a gay buddy. You get to do that. <laughs> Which exonerate actually, you completely. Well, somehow, and, and it's funny because that's your, your argument is, is yeah, know. there's a black guy I work with, and I don't punch him out every day. Like, uh, we talk. I don't just, uh, you know, attack him with a, with a sickle. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? What do you mean? Racist. But then it's kind of racist to point out that right. you have a black friend. That's right. It, it suggests you, you're defensive about being yeah. racist. You pu- cultivate a, a uh, yeah. relationship yeah. with somebody who's your a beard. Yeah. Well, I got David Allen Greer as my black friend. Oh. Yeah. Well, he's not really black enough. Oh, he, when he does that mama. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that is pretty black, yeah. And ever since he got the rims put on his Escalade, yeah, so, he's back okay. in the, the, the black good graces, you know? All right, so he's good. I got Michelle, counter as a lesbian friend. I do have a gay friend. I haven't spoken to him for a while. Like reconnect there. And then I work with a bunch of Hispanic guys, so I think, I think that's covered pretty good. And your I'm, assistant's gay. I'm pretty good. I, oh, I have a gay assistant. Yeah, I don't think he likes me. I need yeah. an Asian. I think he hates you. Yeah. Any Asians listening want to hang out, uh, just, you know, give me a buzz here at the station. You know, and then I'm sort of rounded out, right? Yeah. Oh, missing yeah. anybody? There's no other nationalities on Earth, though. Well, who's going to complain about me bashing the Germans or the French or something like that? I need to deal with those people. And by the way, Asian is Asian. I don't need Japan, Chinese, whatever. Just give me one. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. uh-huh. Zena? Yes? Are you black? No. Oh, okay. Well, I can't use you, sweetie. I saw Detroit. I saw Zena. I thought, well, you know. Just, you know what I'm saying? Playing the odds. Hey. Do you know any Asians, sweetie? Actually, yes, I do. All right. Could you send one of them down? Uh, no. Okay. What's your problem? I want to have a threesome with my boyfriend, and I don't know how to find 
somebody to do it with. You want a girl? Yes. And your boyfriend is uh, cool with this? Do you know any man who's not cool with having a threesome with two other chicks? Well, I, you know what I, I was thinking is that your boyfriend, to re, here's where my brain went. Hmm. hmm you want to have the threesome. That means you want to just destroy, you want to you want to sabotage. You want to blow up this relationship somehow. So that means your boyfriend's a super nice guy mm. that you can't tolerate being with. And he might be the kind of guy that says, uh, I, I don't know, I, that doesn't sound right to me. It might screw Powerful things up. Powerful stuff, yeah. So that's why I was thinking he might be one of those guys. Is he Asian? <laughs> no, he's not Asian. Oh. But you clearly want to blow up this relationship, so enjoy. Yeah. All right. So, Zena, you're done. Here, here. I'm going to give you two choices. One is, okay. one is you're you're a lesbian and you just want an excuse to be with a woman, but you don't want to admit you're a lesbian, so you do it under the guise of a threesome, and that way you get to be with a woman. But it's like there's a guy there, so you're not really a dyke. Sorry, sorry, baby. <laughs> it's my lesbian friend. I offended. But the other, <laughs> although I think they don't mind dyke. Michelle? Okay. Oh, yeah, she minds. Oh, she, she minds. likes, she don't, oh, Are no. there any no. Wait, what, terms? What don't then? you like? I don't like that. What else? Yeah, but what don't you like? I mean, what, what else don't you like? Is that it? I don't like What don't I like? Don't like, oh, don't like love? love? She doesn't <laughs> like love? <laughs> <That's lesbian either. laughs> We're going to call you so much. Let's ball. Let's ball. Okay. All right. What works? No, okay. I, we'll beat I'm this out during the commercial. very much. You're what? I'm in love very much. No. You're very much in well, love. If you are, then you can't tolerate it. And and do you have you ever been with a woman? Yes. You have. Oh, okay. And it, and you liked it. Yes. So this is just an attempt to get that going again, huh? And you'd like to be with a woman again. Yeah. What happened what? to you? Yeah, yeah, why, why would that be a, a sort of hesitating answer if it's something you're seeking out, something you're motivated to do? And when Adam says you want to be with a woman, well, it's like, eh, well, not really. Something's not up really. with you, Zena. Yeah. What happened? Well, we ever I'd like abused? to be with a woman of course, of course. physically, not in a relationship. Right. Women are, are actually me too. <laughs> How do we work that out? <laughs> <laughs> True. I mean, you and I, right? Come on, buddy. Let's go. Well, I mean, we like, came on. Yeah. So is every straight guy too, but we just can't figure out a way around it. But, Zena, were you ever abused? Oh yeah. No. Come on. Ever abused? We didn't hear your answer. No. No, but why Why do you wait then? Why are you so angry? Here's how I know you're angry. You're making me angry. And whenever I'm angry, it means you were physically abused or something is wrong with you. You're very angry. Because the person that gives the delayed answer is the angry person. I've, I know it. That's the one thing I've learned from you. being here. No, guys. I know here. she said no the first time, and then the second time she gave a uh, three Mississippi. Where's your dad? With his wife and children in Mount Clemens. Yeah. Mm, so we abandoned you. Pretty much. Well, All right. It's good times. That's good. And uh, would you consider yourself angry? Yeah. Okay. Well, at least you're honest about your anger. Now we like you more. Yeah. It's marginal, though. <laughs> did, your, uh, did your mom remarry? No. All right. Can you turn your radio down, please, goofball? They were never married. No. So you, don't, you have no relationship with your biological father? No. All right. Now, do you hear the pattern in the super angry people? Everything becomes like some sort of goddamn extraction process. <laughs> and and when do you think you might see, man? Pass. And you have a relate? No. Yeah. And they just pull back. Yeah. And then you have to ring them like a bar rag to get any information out of them because they're angry. And they put that out to the world. And, oh, man. The world hates you when you do that, and then you want to know why you don't get promoted, and you want to know why you don't have your friends, and you want to know why you got stabbed in the back by what who you thought was your best friend, and this and that and the other, and then you get more angry, and then it gets worse, because mm -hmm. you become a full-blown bummer, and no one wants to be around your ass. Well, and then you start creating chaos, too, and vortexes. Then, and, right, oof. right. Like threesomes. Zena. Like threesomes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You are looking to blow this relationship up. I don't know what kind of environment you grew up in other than your father wasn't around but i can hear that you're horribly angry and you're looking for chaos and you're going to find it and the relationship's going to end so if you want to end it go ahead go ahead Enjoy. but she wants to blame it on the all guys want threesomes thing yeah, right whatever yeah well listen you you're you're angry at men you're attracted to women it's chaotic you want to get some therapy or you just want to sort of blindly stumble through life and take all the crap it slings at you Okay. All right, Zena. Good times. Go find a therapist, would you? Yeah. 
not going to happen. All right, not going to happen. But look, and here, here's, here's the thing. Let's go find a bravery song. <laughs> That's therapy. That's the solution. It, look, don't do it for me. I don't give a rat's ass. I got a nice car, a nice house, and a dog that likes me, and ten jobs. I'm fine. Do it for you. I know you're going to show me. You're going to show Drew. You're going to show the world. Oh, no, baby. Not for me. I'm just going to go through my life uh, being miserable. Guess who the joke's on? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's, it, why don't you just crap on your own living room floor and teach me a lesson? <laughs> You know what I mean? Now, yeah. once in a while, you got to deal with these people because they're behind the counter at the uh, car while, rental place at the airport. Now. Right, right. They're they're around, but you don't have to go home to them. And, well, at least I don't. You don't have to deal <laughs> with them. You know, they're not in your family. They're right. not in your space. Right. And uh, no one's going to get any help, and you don't have to get any help, and don't listen to him, and you should just do your thing and all that. Great. Have a horrible life. Enjoy. We'll see you all in hell. Yeah. All right. Now. Let's uh, hear a bravery song, yeah, shall please. we? Let's go. This one is called Unconditional. Yeah, bravery, everybody. Just eating bugles. Pounding bugles and talking to bravery during the break. Hammering bugles. Drew actually uh, busted a mortal, mortar and pestle out from the trunk of his car. He's a doctor. He has one. He just mashed up a whole sack. And some, injected put it. some water in it in mainline. Yeah. yeah. He actually injected an entire sack of bugles into it. <laughs> I should put. I fed that NG tube up my nose and down in my stomach. Just yeah, boom. I just did a sack rectally. <laughs> I, I, I didn't Anal hear, shotgun. I didn't know you were going to talk, talk about that. Well, here's know. what you do. You take the bugles. You just take the regular sack of bugles. You put some warm water in it. You shake it up until it dissolves. And then just go ahead and ram a ballpoint pen in it and shove it in your ass. And boom, you just take the whole thing up there. Ready, mate? It's like, you know, like those... Uh, yeah, fleet enemas. Fleet enemas, yeah. Yeah, I would, and I was eating them, and, you know, orally while I was actually receiving it. Anally. Awesome. This actually reminds me of a question that I have to ask Dr. Drew. Go right ahead. On, a, on our tour bus, we have a, a we heard a rumor mm -hmm. of the, I think it's called the vodka tampon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tampon. Tampon. Yeah. Well, Where you a... soak a tampon in vodka, then kind of just shove it up your ass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, they, people take alcohol rectally yeah. in various means. Is that sweet? Is it sweet? I don't know if it's sweet it's or sour, but it well, works. First off. If That's, I'm gonna, how, how do you get a how do you get a limp, wet tampon up your a? Mm. You gotta dilate. Yeah, warm compress. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> what do I know? What do I gay? I'm no gay. <laughs> Come on, Drew. Do the math. But don't, I, we don't yeah. put an ice cube up your ass. But people do right and now. alcohol enemas and things like that because wow. it's more rapidly absorbed. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what you don't want to do if you're gonna do Ooh, the Lord. vodka. Tampon is don't go for don't bother spending money on the top shelf stuff like you know the Stoli and that you go right for this smearing off and you know the, oh you mean top shelf alcohol yeah no, yeah no no, no. your bother. ass doesn't know the difference <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying well Wait. maybe yours doesn't how yeah. dare you <laughs> it's a discriminated I thought maybe we're gonna skimp on the tampons which oh no 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 you want to you want to buy the good stuff only go with the Go with the big names. Uh, all right, we need to take a break. Let me say a couple of things. Though we did, we did. We we're talking. I was talking to the Bravery about how angry that last caller yeah, was, yeah. and and we figured out that angry people do everything slowly. They answer, you know, it's one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then you get you get one syllable, and it's all meant to sort of frustrate <clears throat> and do that. Just make you wait for and, them. And I pointed out who crosses the street the slowest out of anybody: the angry people. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, people that are happy sort of break into jogs as yeah. they cross oh, no, streets. Oh, you sure. did And angry people. <laughs> yeah, well, I got to say one thing about the brothers. Fastest people on the planet. Not the fastest pedestrians often. Yes. But uh, anyway, uh, it's interesting math if you work it out. But the point is, is uh, the more angry you are, the slower you walk in front of that car. Well, and, you when know, you're angry, everything's after you. Yeah. Everything. You, you can Here's the question. What do angry people do when they trip on the street? Because I feel like maybe it's just the happy people that kind of turn into a jog and run it off. Right. Oh, you mean yeah. Yeah, when you get that uh, Charlie just, horse or something, you got to run it off? You, you, you like call the police and an attorney. Right. Uh, when you're angry. Oh, it's yeah. A, when this, I know we got to take a pavement. break, but uh, Chen... Uh, Chensita? Chensita? You're, th you're 30? Yeah. You want to be my token Asian friend so I can make <laughs> Asian jokes and then point That's out me. that I have Asian friends? Sure, you can use me. Here's the problem. You're a chick, and people just think I'm trying to F you. Number one. Uh -uh. Are, are you cute? Yeah, I'm cute. No, see, she, see, she, she, she could be a professional, though. Who is number one? You, you are an uh, accountant, no. attorney, or something? What? I can't Sweet. hear you both. Okay, hold on a second. Here's the problem. 
I can't have a hot Asian chick as my only Asian friend so I can make off-colored well, Asian got, jokes. You've already got Minka. That's my point. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You can't have a hot chick because people are like, oh, of course you, you're friends with her. She's hot. You want to get in her pants. See what I mean? So the hotness trumps race. Yes. In all cases, probably. <laughs> Almost all cases. Yeah. I need unattractive people of these races. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear about that. You understand? Well, you heavy set you is nice, and I need mail. You need mail. You need well, mail we got to talk to her some more, though. About yeah, your... because if a, if a guy had a hot Asian chick next to him, it wouldn't be like you still wouldn't. He still could be right. He wouldn't get credit. Yeah, he wouldn't get credit. So you have to talk to her about some of the th things that you might raise. Well, maybe maybe she's brother. got a, a heavy set older brother. Or yeah, something. yeah, we'll talk to her. All right, hold on. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Hey, hey it's buddy. Love Line. All oh. callers tonight. We'll, get, sure we'll manage to, to get on the air because i got to get this in. 11 years on the air with this guy. We'll receive to tickets now. to see Cry Wolf, a group of students who uh, set up an online fantasy about a murder. The thing comes to life and he kills everybody. It's actually a scary movie. <laughs> it is? Yeah, and uh, Katie Kirk was promoting the hell out of it this Did morning. Did you see it? And I've seen a lot of the previews where it looks good. Yeah, really? Yeah, it really does. Everyone who gets tickets, uh, all you who are 18 or over who are on the show tonight, that will win tickets to see Block Party. You have qualified to win tickets to see Block Party anywhere they play in Europe. They did the soundtrack mm -hmm. this Friday. You lie, you die, cry wolf in theaters everywhere. Mm. There we go, done. All right. Let's, uh, anyway, we've anyway. got to keep moving. Yeah. Ch Chensin? Ch Ch what the hell name is that? Aren't you offended by Adam's... Um... How do you say your name? Chancita. Oh, all, all right. right. What kind of name is that? The ocean. Mm. Ocean from Laos. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know if that... I guess that works. <laughs> what, uh... <laughs> I guess what, that works. What do you do? What the do you do for a judgment. living? I'm unemployed right now. Uh-oh. Yes, yeah. I can hang out with you every night. Yeah. What do you, what, what you do? Good. Dental hygienist? No. I'm actually studying for my real estate license. Really? All right. All right. Do you, do you have an older brother that looks more Japanese that could... <laughs> It was heavy set. Yeah. Could hang out with yeah. me. Yeah, he's thirty-two. He lives in Carlsbad. Okay, and yeah. it's and it's important to have a good ethnic name too. So you know when What's I say okay. it. His, his yeah, when I say like Saria. Uh, could be confused for Mexican though. I need like Chung Wa. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? No, I don't. I need any well, sands or Tom. He can speak something impressive. I'm sure. Okay, but then he's not going to be there in person all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, thanks, Chinsita. And I, I mean, it was you know. I, your heart was in the right place, but I, uh, between the Laotian stuff and the, the, the brother with the crazy name, I just I don't think it's going to work for me yeah, right yeah. now. It's not a fit. Yeah, you know, maybe yeah. in the future. Stop for everybody. Yeah, maybe in the future. All right, Drew. Who else? Uh, Who's been on hold for a long time? We just say hi to this guy, uh, Kenneth. Uh, hmm. Kenneth. Hello. You're 19. Yeah. You're not Japanese, are you? Um, I could pretend if you want. Um, mm. uh, what's uh, your question? That's offensive. What's up? Um, I guess I'm um, kind of a klepto, and uh, well, more than just that, I really don't treat people like people. I feel I, I lie. I really don't get attached very much. Okay. Well, that's a bad way to go through life. <laughs> Horrible way to go through life. Uh, High yeah. risk for addiction with that stuff. <clears throat> and not just, you know, people think, well, it's a bad way for people who are around you to go through life, but uh, it's really just oh, you. Oh, yeah, it's bad for everybody. So, I've been saying it all night, but uh, how about you get a little help? That, that kind of, the only way that, the, you're really talking about building the capacity for empathy, the capacity to experience other people as people with agentive experiences of their own. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only way that happens with the intensive, long-term, interpersonal experiences like a residential program for a year or two. Really? Yeah. All right. Babe. And I hope it's not the county jail, because that's where some people get that treatment. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. That's it, the bravery, everybody. That's the name of the CD. You probably already have it, but go out and grab another one. Christmas is coming up, you know, you got to get gifts for people. Sure, you cool? All right. Ready to go. Thanks, guys. Good seeing you. you again. Thank uh, you. Good luck on the tour. And until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Adam had mentioned that poor people don't do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh and you're the poor guy. Well, oh, just because the name's Juan doesn't mean he's poor, but, but it helps. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Or the, 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 the producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.